Greetings in the name of the Most High. Uh, from the studio today, and I'm going to move out of here pretty soon. Um, kind of worked, burnt the you know midnight oil on on getting a I, I would say a simple video of this track, that, a DCP track called uh, uh, Jade Hell with one L, and it's just kind of a play on Jade Helm, Jade Hell, Jade Helm, Jade Hell, and um, Rich came up with this track that. You know, I, I, it was pretty inspiring, kind of a dark uh, topic. And um, obviously, you know, uh, this thing coming up. I mean, I don't think anyone in America really likes the military, you know, kind of going through a massive drill. And then there's all this paranoia online of, uh, of um, you know, totalitarianism, rounding up the red list, blue list. And I, I have to admit, it's kind of freaked me out. I mean, I know Frankie hasn't spent much time really thinking about it um, because he's not hes not really concerned. A lot of people aren't concerned. But I just decided to do a track that just kind of shows the worst case scenario, which is basically be winding up in front of a firing squad at the end. And uh, uh, it's a little piece of it here. Let's see if I can play some of this. I don't think it'll come through very well, but you know, you you can go hear it. You can hear it's really big. So it's this big kind of Euro, like Berlin-inspired kind of dark dance kind of groove in a way, but it's just, uh, there's ambient in there too, and, you know, it's, it's very, uh, it was very inspiring. So I, you know, so that's what I came up with at, in doing the, in choosing the lyrics and the, and the idea, it was just a matter of tracking along and trying to do it very simply, you know, um, just not not trying to show off as a singer. I don't think that's a good idea for me anyway. But just being real calm, real real, almost like kind of tired or just world weary. It was the kind of attitude I took on. And I used a couple of different mics here. I used one by Earthworks, which is like having a studio mic, but it's 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 meant for live. But it means that you can track your vocals with all the sound going on, and you know fans and the computer and everything else and it won't pick them up it'll just focus on your voice and it you know so I was able to kind of really get into it and um and then the video the same thing just kind of trying to keep it real simple you know so there it is that's our contribution to raising consciousness I'm going to get out of here now I've been here all night and I guess I will be seeing the sun coming up even the the dogs are <laughs> wouldn't go along with me and, and that, and they're sleeping. And there's Mr. Eli, who's admittedly been hiding. Mr. Eli, come on, Mr. Eli. Mr. Eli, he's there. He wasn't there all night. No, you're not going to be bothering me. See, the thing is, the reason he's out there is he's trying to get away from you. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh, gosh, it was a long night. Um... So I, you know, the inspiration for it came, I guess, the idea, because the Internet's going so crazy on the Jade Helm thing, and it's like everything from extreme conspiracy theories uh, to this is the, you're on a list if you're, let, let me put it this way, you're on a list if you're a veteran, <laughs> a uh, libertarian, conservative, if you've ever voted Republican. I mean, obviously, you're seeing this whole, like what we said in 2008. What I said in 2008 was basically that the, the left tends to be in a kind of what you might call a totalitarian, you know, they tend to 
go after people domestically that don't agree with them. And as you can see, and there's a, and there's a dark side too in, in which um, the left in the form of, say, the gay lobby, if you will, of the left, which is a political party. It's nothing to do with being gay necessarily, but they are there to attack Christians because, and this is just a big topic, you know, where do I, how do I approach this? And I'm a little raw right now just because of, uh, I had some technical difficulties with the, uh, with the video and then it, it seemed to render fine. But when you do a track, and if you really believe it, then, you know, adding the video, it's just as much work as doing a track. Now that's a, I'm going to sit down over here and we're going to talk to the people. So I'm just emerging out of the studio after a, a, uh, a night session, which I kind of like that because at that hour, you know, the wee hours of the morning, like, uh, you really... You can really, well, I, that's my best time for focusing. And I find that if I, it, it, usually I split the sleep and I'll, I'll get a nap or catch up in the daytime. Um, and that's why I guess it's nice to have access to the studio, which I don't have to drive to it, so that I can uh, focus in on it. But there's technical difficulties going from basically a, a whole studio dedicated to, to one software company, Avid, and Pro Tools, and it's like anything else, the, the hardware chokes, because it's, it's hardware, software interfacing with a computer, and then the sound engine, the sound and the clock, and all the stuff that runs it, the software is external hardware, so it's, it's real fussy, you know? And so when you put up the video program I use is Premiere Pro, and I like it a lot. It's real, you know, I mean, I need more fonts and more, you know, effects or, you know, something that looks a little more sophisticated than what they give you. But I don't even know how to put the effects in. And like, I'm in Photoshop, I have no clue what I'm doing. You know, it's just, it's, and, and that's okay. But if a song is worthy, I figure, and not every song gets this treatment, but I figure you go the extra mile and kind of do a video of it, and that's a way to present it. And there's a lot of songs I like to go back and do videos of. Uh, again, it's like budgeting time, and you know, as I get, I think with video and songs, it's 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 nice to keep it simple. But on something like this Jade Hell, Jade Helm uh, song, this Jade Hell, as you can see, it's a, it's pretty you know big electro track, really got some great vibe to it, and it and the mix came out real good. So I just wanted to keep it kind of simple, but at the same time. I've seen people that really go simple. They'll put the album cover on and they'll, or they'll have a, a video of themselves in the distance just sitting there or sitting in the studio. And they'll have that kind of going with the song. Because, you know, I want you to hear the, the music and the mix and all that. And I think the video, in a way, this one kind of distracts from it. So what I came up with was just putting the lyrics popping up on title cards. And so you get all the lyrics kind of like printed out and then a few images of, you know, military drills in, in uh, the, the United States. And, um, you know, documentation about, you know, the, the kind of the things you see on the internet already about Jade Helm. But I, I kind of just flip in and out of those real quick and, and focus more on just giving you the cue cards, which um, the only thing we don't have is a, b a bouncing ball <laughs> with, with the, the words. But, the words are pretty simple. It's basically about the overreach of a, a military drill going, say, live to, to, let's say, it's a martial law thing, and so it's, so then they start rounding people up who uh, say or do the wrong things, or, you know, people they just don't, they suspect uh, would uh, be Americans and like America, or what, whatever the, th I, look, I, you know, I, I, I've gone through such an ordeal over the weekend, you know, being Easter, I don't do well on holidays usually, and, and um, you know, Easter, Passover, the blood moon, and my concerns are, you know, I've been so bummed out regarding the, um, the aerosol spraying, you know, for one thing, it's got me really down because I know the Lord keeps telling me to give it to him, and I give it to him, and I've just been praying really fervently 
that he put a stop to the uh, chemtrail drought, you know. Um, the, the entire thing of California, the, such a tragedy, is 100% caused by uh, the, the U.S. military. And, and or whoever's, whatever wing of the military that is, it's flying the plane. I assume it's military industrial combat. I don't even know if it's international or whatever it is. But I'm, uh, I'm assuming that the CIA was, you know, lying when it was saying, um, gosh, are, you think people are doing weather modification on us? You know, and I, I, I can't imagine that we don't, that those are foreign planes up there because there would be an alarm, right? So it's got to be ours. And um, anyway, the drought in California is 100%. It's a chemtrail drought. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an aerosol drought, or if you like, it's a, a geoengineering um, drought. And all the proof is there, satellite photos, everything to show how these, um, uh, when a weather front's coming in, then before that they spray. And, and, and what it does is it alters the, the precipitation that would have ordinarily hit California, say, and then us. And then it goes and, and it's like creates a deluge somewhere else. And every time we've had an El Nino situation, which is warm Pacific water that usually causes what we used to call the Pineapple Express, we get all the storms from like Hawaii, you know, and uh, they would come barreling in and um, one after the other. And that was a typical spring, like this time of year. But instead, you have this ongoing, um, you know, it seems like they created such an emergency. And it, it is, you know, and this is global warming, you know. This is 100% man, man-made, not from factories and, and CO2 emissions, but it's created pretty much 100% from, um, um, from the aerosol spraying. And I guess they just think that people won't wake up because they don't, and they don't talk, that this should be talked about on every news outlet, because it affects everybody. I mean, it affects, you know, liberals and conservatives and Christians and Muslims and atheists, and everybody is affected by these planes. And I just don't understand why they want to, they have this thing about, oh, well, it's the factories causing it or whatever, but... Um, the next step in California, and I, I guess we have to talk about this because it's, it's just, it's so troubled me the last few days. So, you know, I, I, there's so many fronts where I'm troubled. One of the persecution of Christians and the killing of Christians in the Middle East and then this here. And it just seems like they've created all this. These are the people from the secret societies or from the, you know, call them Luciferians, high level Masons, whatever. It's all connected in, you know, they're all connected. And, um, instead of being a force for good in the world. You know, this, this is why I think their reign is coming to an end. I believe their reign is coming to an end because we're going into this age of light. I hate to call it Lucifer, because that's the light bringer, but loose light, you know, but, but real light, the true light. Light that means that, you know, light shining in the dark areas, the truth coming out about things like even 9-11 and, you know, maybe, you know, a lot of stuff, regardless of the apologists, you keep trying to stick to the party line. And... People's minds are changing, you know. Uh, the elite's minds are changing, you know, people that run the globe. I, everyone's changing right now. And I keep saying it, and I'll say it again. This is not 1930 Germany. This is not 1917 Russia. This is not the, the time of the Chinese Revolution. It's a time of global information. It's a, and that's, to me, another, you know, so, so when we say light, that's light, you know. So it's awfully hard, you know, that you can't, there's no hiding anymore in the dark places and hitting you with a Pearl Harbor event and saying, okay, let's go to war. I mean, we've done that and had perpetual war since the 9-11 thing. But what I mean by it is that all this information coming out is changing the way things happen. It's not possible that a uh, Albert Pike thing would be able to even be pulled off, even if the if they're trying to do it, and I know the Christian church has been involved in the end times programming of expecting an Armageddon, expecting war, expecting all this stuff so Jesus can return. You know, they've been as much guilty in terms of fostering, and a lot of the people there are in the club, if you will. The honchos that run religion are always in the club. And, um, but here's the thing. Yeah, here's the good news. Let me start with some good news. The good news is this isn't sustainable and this you know road that we've been on for a long time you know i mean this just didn't start you had world war ii world war one you know you've had 
some tremendous hellish things on Earth. And uh, even though they keep trying to gin it up and get, you know, and get the world war going and get Russia involved and get all, the, they're, 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 you know, and it is primarily, you know, the central location of it is the United States. I mean, we are a force of evil right now in the world, but you see, we have been, and our industrialists have been involved in collaborating with people from all different countries to, you know, throw a war and, you know, that people create great wealth from that, you know, from, you know, look, even just investing in stocks and, um, you know, uh, military stuff, you know, you're guilty, right? And I've been guilty uh, of that too. Um, uh, but in, in the area that we're moving into, this kind of thing, you know, the way things have been done isn't possible. And that's where all the I believe the angst and the, and the pressure and the, the, the Jade Helm drill, you know, the desperation to get to sort of lock up the globe and get their way and maybe just lock up the Americans, you know, get them in martial law and tie them down somehow. And, uh, you know, and, and do this sort of Nazi, Nazi thing of we want the right sort of people here in America. And if you have views like you, the founding fathers, you wouldn't be welcome in today's military. I mean, those kind of inflammatory statements. Uh, what what do they expect people are going to do? Just sit there and take it because the military changes and loses their morals, loses the moral high ground, loses their principles. Everyone else is supposed to lose them too. I don't think so. That's not, the, this, that's not changing in the favor of that. See, I believe they've misread the changes. They thought they would be at the helm of the changes. I guess that's why the, the Jade Helm motto is master the human domain. The human domain is the entire earth, folks. So even though this is an exercise, this is some, I, I consider it a global exercise and it just happens to be located in the United States. But I mean, it's a, obviously the human domain is, is the whole world. And, and it looks like, you know, the kind of drill they're doing is a training for martial law, finding out who's friendly, you know, finding out who's going to go along with what, the new world order or whatever. There is no new world order. That, that's been long canceled. And this, I'm trying to get this word out. I, I don't know if I, I'll be able to because it kind of wrecks all the Christians end times paranoia and it ruins the totalitarians on the left and then it ruins the warmongers on the right, <laughs> you know, because they're all losers in, in, in this cosmic change that's coming now. Uh, call it the return of Christ. You'd be perfectly good at uh, doing it that way. You'd call it... Um, I don't call it just the, the cosmic change in the universe. I don't care what you call it. It's on and it's happening. And it's just, it's amazing um, how technolo technology and everything has gone along with the, with the change. That's come. But the change they want to see is a lot, you know, their attitude or their, 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 you know, almost caveman sort of pedantic mentality is to... Uh, you know, put the kibosh on the internet. Yeah, you know, stop those people from. And this isn't that time. You know, this is not 1930. I'm sorry. That age, the age of Pisces, if you will, for those of you who follow any kind of astrology, you know, because all that has meaning too. I don't follow it because the Lord really doesn't. You know, my 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 faith, my walk, doesn't really uh, permit that. But you know, there's a lot of mention of signs and things in the Bible, so you know, basically the end of one age, the beginning of another. You know what I mean? The, this is definitely the end of the age. And if you like, it's definitely the, not just the end times, but the end of time as we know it. Okay? And so the influence of that new paradigm is coming in right now. And it, that's more multidimensional and favors the individual, not the collective. It favors the spiritual walk, not the material. It's a complete different way of life that's coming in and it's affecting everyone from the, the man in the street to the, very, the people at the very top of the food chain. Everyone's affected. All the minds are affected. Whether you're a Satanist, whether, you know, a Luciferian, Mason or whatever, or whether you're a, um, uh, a monk in, in the mountain somewhere, or whether you're, whether you're a day laborer, it doesn't really matter. All minds are affected, you know, and I think a lot that has been hidden is now to be revealed. And uh, 
so I think there's this. I've talked a long time ago with Frank Whalen about this, where you know when they when they 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 they're desperate because they see the finish line and they want to get their their goal because they've been you know let's let's give them a little bit of uh, understanding. They've been working on this you know global order, a one world government, a one world you know thing, uh, the their way, okay. Um, uh, w w population control, eugenics, cloning, uh, singularity, all this. So they've been working on this for not just decades, but, you know, millennia, okay? And they've been, they see their goal in sight, and they see it jeopardized by this information, or if you will, the light, okay? Coming into the darkness where they they're have all their plans and exposing them all, and they're freaked out. So what they're doing is they're trying to, you know, put the martial law and get the false flags and get people tied down, get the shills on the news media to lie and say that it was box cutters or it was Oswald or whatever they, you know, they do. And, and you know, keep it locked down, darn it. You know, get, what do you, we pay you for? We pay you to put our, you know, to create a reality out there for the people where they, they just don't know what's going on and what we're up to. And, and it, it, too many people are finding out what we're up to, and it's, it's making it impossible to dot, 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 govern, or rather to rule, to dominate. And, you know, quite frankly, now I want to really speak my heart here. You know, these people have had their chance, right? They've had global domination, They've already had their new world order. They preferred war. They preferred human suffering. They were not a force for good. They were not a force for the light, for the truth. You know, they, they, they were just basically wanting to dominate, even controlling the thoughts of people so they were, you know what, total slaves? So they could what? I, I don't even know, well, they wouldn't even know what to do if they, they, they got their way. But they've had their chance. They've had their time of domination. They've had their moment. And even, like I say, they're changing, so a lot of them are defecting. You know, They've had their um, networks. They've had the money tied up. They've enslaved the people. They've created starvation, sickness, death, the chemtrail thing, which is uh, killing the plants and the animals and the, how cruel they are to, to do all that. Um, and it's it, it, and they have the people so bamboozled they don't even look up they don't see how things have changed, um, and, and you know and it just doesn't stop there. But all of this is in the consciousness now. None of it's hidden. Notice, notice, it's becoming more and more pervasive in the consciousness to the point where the news media won't be able to deny. In fact, some of the stories are leaking in. Um, the future belongs to the truth. The future belongs to the light. The future does not belong to, um, you know, the, 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 the little clubs um, with their, you know, with their secret rituals and their handshakes and whatnot and, and, and their, their fezes and whatever else they're into. And those days are gone. And I think that um, the, the real change that's happening is cosmic. cosmic. And so we might as well uh, go with it. You know, that's what they say. So they're freaked out. They're blaming, you know, the, the uh, information on the Internet. They're blaming the, you know, right-wing conspiracy. They're blaming all this stuff. Uh, when it's not the fault of anyone, it's this process that's going on that's, that's beyond human. It's beyond our ability to, to control. It's beyond our... Um, it's out of our hands. It's not any one group doing it. It's just all coming to the surface. And the future favors, you know, the, the, the free. The future favors the free flow of information. The, the future does not favor a bunch of bullies at the top, you know, bringing in military and everything else to, to enforce political correctness or, 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 or lock people up. That, that belongs to a different era, which is not where we're headed. That's the point I'm trying to make. And like I said, what did they do when they had their chance at global domination for how many years? Thousands? I mean, you know, what did they do? They didn't, they didn't, they had an opportunity to be a force for good, to be, a, 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 you know, to be good rulers that would, that would influence 
people positively and be a positive impact on lives, but they wanted control and they wanted to dominate and they wanted people to be subjective to subject to them and they wanted to treat people as cattle or as property that could be bought and sold or killed at will who you don't know and then no one is the wiser so they decided to use their secrecy to foment their perversions their um, lust for power their uh, their selfishness they were selfish and everyone that is tied in with the satanic is selfish and is narcissistic and is and is a force of, of, of failure, you know? And that's becoming more and more and more and more and more apparent. So, hold on, people, because you see, the good news about this is nobody loses here. It's not like one side versus another. That's antiquated thinking. All, you know, all people are affected by what's happening. No matter what side of the ledger you're on, I assume that most people in America are you know, probably freaked out right now because they're, they realize the lid's blown off of the thing and they're wondering if they're going to keep getting a paycheck. You know, I mean, it's, so it's, it's just really a frightening time. But, you know, they shouldn't have kept secrets anyway. <laughs> they shouldn't have given a pass anyway. But they did, you know. Good people do nothing. I understand. But it's in this place we're headed now. There really isn't, you know, any... I guess force of evil would just, it just doesn't work the way that it worked before. And I think a lot of these globalists will tell you the same thing. It, it's just, it's not working like it did before. The, the paradigm of old is not the paradigm today. If, what, if they try what they did in 1930 here, it will not work. Um, it's already you know, well, I made my contribution. To, I mean, I guess the jade helm is the thing that's up now because Americans don't like. Well, I don't know about the the left because they don't seem to be Americans anymore. <laughs> they they used to be. You know, it used to be liberal. The the yesterday's liberal was um, much more reasonable than you know. Like today's today's Republican is yesterday's liberal kind of you know, and um, then they're kind of at war with their the, with conservatives. Uh, and they don't want, you know, it's like conservative, liberal, you know, all these labels are kind of antiquated as well. You know, it's basically being a force for good, for, for, for the truth, for the light, you know, for the, for, the, uh, for the raising of consciousness and the empowering of the individual versus, um, you know, and the prosperity of individuals and families and things, you know, and, you know, you know a force of good, a force of light, a force of love, you know, that kind of thing. And with good regard for a fellow man. I mean, these people have had no regard. These these rulers have just had regard for their own, you know, just like the criticism of Obama going golfing and lavishing himself so much while um, making sure the economy, let's say, you know, does not benefit the middle class. While well, he says he's benefiting the middle class, but he needs more taxes or something before we'll see any benefit, before you'll see any equality. When he's all about, uh, he's all about. Um, a two-tiered society, which is, you know, the elites on the top and then the rest in poverty. Um, that kind of thinking, that sort of oligarch, um, dictator type of stuff, it just isn't the future. That would be, I mean, I consider him an unwise ruler because he's someone that cannot, he cannot flow with the times, he can't change. And he's also out of step. And when I say he, I mean they, really, you know, the, the whole kind of group that's in power at this point. They're out of step with their rulers. The people that rule over them have understood that, you know, no, they, you know, they don't want to destroy the world at this time. And I don't believe they, you know, again, their minds have been changing. And that's why the Albert Pike letter to Mazzini or whatever is, is not, I know they're following that letter. They're following the Masonic plan, basically a Masonic plan. So you Masons really, um, you know, this is what your leaders are up to. Well, you, you've been you've been deceived if you just think it's like a you know a charitable organization or whatever. Um, but they've been at this thing, and uh, and now they feel threatened, like they're going to lose it, but. They've they've kept on with that Mazzini letter. They've kept on with the, the 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 Masonic plan, and that's what Obama has been implementing. That's that's the whole goal, and it's a kind of a global Luciferian caliphate, if you will, 
and the idea is to get the Muslims and the Christians, you know, kill them all off, and then you have the Luciferians left, and it's hunky dory, and everything's fine with 500 million people here, not a billion, not so, so, so a lot of people die, and then they come up victorious after all the carnage, and have their clones, and they're you know they're downloading into machines, and they go off to the stars, leaving everyone else behind. Thank you for your labor. Thank you for boosting us up. Now we'll take it from here. And that's, you know, a world of darkness. That, that's a consciousness of selfishness. That's a consciousness of um, lust, greed, being rewarded, where it, it usually, you know, in nature it isn't. So, and the very thing that a lot of these people promote, you know, say the new ageism, you know, the thing that like, like, like some on the left, like this James Cameron, you know, who, who bailed out of America before all the fit hit the shan and went to New Zealand because he, he was told that uh, things were going to get really bad here. And so he, he doesn't want to. So he took off, figuring that America was done for. You know, he had the money to get out of here and go do that. Uh, you don't leaving you, well, after he preached at you in, in his film, uh, what was it, uh, Avatar, he preached at you on how the world should, this is how we should all be. We turn to the thing and the big tree, which is basically sort of a uh, crypto and neo um, uh, paganism uh, brought back to life. You know, we've lost our way because we, I don't know, whatever that, you know, it's a typical new age kind of thing. And, um, you know, and then he vilifies the, the military being the conservatives, you know, the military were the conservative, the right wing, know nothing, you know, tear up nature, hurt the animals and blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, there was the whole thing of avatars and machines that are that are like human and and uh, and, and have human emotions. And they should, you know, there's, you know, what about human rights for them and whatever kind of twisted, confabulated sort of story he tried to do. And um, but basically, it was one big lecture from a James Cameron, from uh, from his, you know, taking time out from his billionaire lifestyle to to let you know that you're doing it all wrong and you need to do it his way. And then, as if to punish even even further arrogance, he takes off to New Zealand. Uh, he's washed his hands of you. He lectured you, and then you did not heed. And so the the big, you know. Uh, the big kibosh is coming down on all, all of you who aren't going along with that way of, of, of life. And I think that's the kind of struggle that we've seen. It's the old guard passing, and that's represented by Obama and the company. These are the, you know, and, and you know, the, the socialists and the capitalists who work together behind the scenes as capitalists, but to, fom to foment the, the, the socialism on the, on the regular people so they make sure there's no excess uh, profits they might get, you know, amongst the people, so the people remain poor. That's what socialism does. It keeps the people poor. Um, but they'll always, you know, they've always been on these elites. They have the money. They have freedom. They have private airplanes. They can go do what they want. They play golf every day. They, they, they're having a good time. They're, they're, they've enjoyed all this for a lot of years, for a lot of, a lot of, a lot of time. And that time is coming up to an end, you see. And as a result of that, I believe they're freaked out and they're trying, well, we're going to put the kibosh on these Americans. We're going to, you know, whatever. They're going to, they're gonna, you know, do, use this drill, I think, to kind of, you know, keep intimidating people with this political correctness and keep, you know, enforcing the law that if you say the wrong thing or if you, you insult somebody or whatever, you could be hauled off too, you know. Just make it almost impossible for you to comply, as, as we saw with the... Uh, the, the um, the big story about the uh, pizzeria and the fact that they wouldn't you know, serve a, a gay wedding because they're Christians and they believe in the Bible and what the Bible has to say. And, uh, and then this insane, rabid, um, what, gay mafia, uh, I don't even know what they are, you know, because it's, it's uh, certainly not all gays, but, um, you, you know, the, 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 and it's not just gays, it's, it's the left. You know, the gays have been, I told you, a tool of the left, and that's what they've used their sexuality for. And I find it really sad, you know, that that's happened. But they're rabid, and they, they, wanted, they really want to kill these Christians. And um, that's why, I'll tell you another truth that, that you may not have considered. The reason the gays don't go after the Muslims 
And the Muslims kill people because they're gay. But then the Muslims are gay too, but they just, I can't explain it, it's really complicated because the gayness in the Middle East is, is rampant. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can't, I, I just, you know, it's hard to explain, right? It's, it's this weird, screwed up thing. But they're friends, they're, they're basically allies, if you will, in this pursuit of the Christian because the Bible slams sodomy. And it just, it's an ancient hatred of, toward God, let's say, or toward the God of the Bible. And, um, you know, so they can't, you know, just go murder these people, which is what they want to do. And that's why you had all the death threats. But they can, they, can, they can work politically to punish them. You know, that's how Obama loves to punish anyone that disagrees with him. Um, another arrogant, you know, arrogant child, childish behavior, which is not to be favored. You know, wisdom is to be favored in the future, not petulance. A petulant ruler is no ruler at all. It's a lousy ruler. And I think the other part of this, and I'm just looking deeply kind of into it, and so I'm revealing things to you. The other part of this is that because the people were all supposed to be enamored of Obama. They were supposed to be head over heels. You know, he was supposed to bring people together. You know, he, he didn't do that. He's, he's disrespected. He's looked down upon as a, a, a having leadership skills. And I'm not looked down upon, but he, he's, he's hidden off to the side as an embarrassment. And, um, you know, uh, so he's become angry. And in his anger, I believe you see things like Jade Helm and stuff like that is kind of, it's, it's almost like the left is saying to you, because it's got nothing to do with, with the left, that they're not going to deal with them. They're just going, the, the whole point of it is the Southwest is to lock that down. It's, it's been a very important focus for them. Um, you know, so, so punishing people for not having embraced the greatness of Obama, something to that effect. And it's not just Obama doing it, it's just people that, that had a vested interest in a certain outcome, they didn't get it, so now that you know, so now you see the 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 the, the, uh, the iron fist coming in um, to to basically, you know, that that could just as easily in a time of martial law or something, a national emergency, could become a punishing arm to be used for political punishment. But that's the theme of Obama, political punishment, punishment of anyone that d disagrees or has been born in the wrong place or has, you know, I mean, I think Obama is the most racist uh, president probably in maybe ever in this world, you know, so extreme racist, extreme at the same time. When I say racist, I mean um, using race to, to divide people and um, I guess you could say racialist because I know he ha hangs out with a lot of white people, but I, the point I'm trying to make is that someone who's used race to divide and everything he could to divide people and people don't like him and they don't they don't love him they don't worship him they don't um they they, they turn a blind eye to any kind of ideas he has you know his policies they just see him as a lying kind of reprobate um person a failure that's occupying so so where he's found success is in going totalitarian and then having all that support from the left that really wants to punish or even kill uh, conservatives or kill Christians or whatever it is. So he's, he's whipped that up as a, because he's an unwise ruler. A wise ruler would bring people together for the common good and, and, and create a prosperous nation uh, or be a force of good in that way and, 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 and lead uh, in innovation and not try to you know, cut people down so they can't innovate, cut people down so they can't, have a spirit of, um, you know, of sort of a communist spirit where, where you know, the, the, you don't get innovation, you don't get invention, you don't get entrepreneurship, you don't get, um, because, you know, they don't want capitalism, yet they're capitalists. I mean, it's a really bizarre dichotomy. But he represents, in a sense, the, the kind of failure of the secret societies, if you will, of the whole plan, which is neither left nor right. You know, and, and then like he's neither really left nor right. It's really um, a, a whole different vision they have that does not include you and me. Um, and that looks to be in jeopardy, okay? So there's a pun. So now it's lock down the internet, bring the troops to it, punish those people, got to disarm those people, you know, disempower them, 
You know, they will behave, damn it. And um, it's just really interesting watching this, this go on. Uh, do more of those chemtrail plays. Drought in California, let's make it so dry that uh, we have to move P And this is the other thing that I have a vision of that I'm very, very frightened of. I just really hate this. But that if the, if the drought gets severe enough, I want to turn to that. I mean, well, look, my, my theory about why they do things and about, you know, how they, I, I believe they thought that Obama would be, you know, the, the Messiah or whatever, their Antichrist or whatever. I think they thought that. And then it just didn't happen and it's just become petty and, you know, it, it's just, it's, it, I, I'm turning away and just, I want to cover this man for, you know, I just, I don't think he knows what he looks like out there. He, that that when, he, when he contradicts himself every other day, I just, I cringe. You know, I don't want, you know, some of that's on purpose to make, to play the part of a leader that fails so America has failed, you know, and to bring America down. Some of that is, you know, intentional probably, you know. But it's just hard, you know, especially the first African American, you know, even though he's, he's a half breed, but I mean, still a person of color, you know, there's, there's all, all that healing that's happened. And you just, you wanted him to be the best president ever, you know. And I think a lot of people believe he is. And they want to, but they feel, they feel violent against people who disagree with them. I mean, to a point that's not natural, that, that's something wrong there. Uh, it, it, there is something definitely wrong. Um, anyway, so the consciousness is being raised. I'm going to try to get all this said. It can't be linear, so sorry. Um, the consciousness is being raised on all this, and, and more and more people are able to understand what I'm saying, for example, and my analysis of history here, of where we are in history. And they're, they're, they're understanding this, this cosmic change. And like I say, it does not favor the totalitarian. It does not favor the secret societies. It doesn't favor the um, you know, secret dirty rituals and all that stuff. It doesn't favor any of that. that the future does not favor any of that. Call, call the cosmic change the tying of Satan up in the pit and, and the thousand-year reign, you know, and you'd be, you'd be in good stead right there. And that's just, that's one religion, that's one, one point of view from one Bible, and, and other people have similar points of view that come from different backgrounds and different religions. I, um, I've kind of really lost interest in religion. I've, I've just, um, don't really care what the, what they do, like what the Pope does or what the, Evangelicals do. I, I feel the need to to protect people that are in the Christian system. I may not be a churchgoer myself, and uh, I'm not. I, I'm you know I've I never really fit into it anyway. I, I, I might have tried a few years ago, but look, I, you, you run into trouble because I can uncover stuff. So if people are keeping secrets. I not around me. They're not. And then that get, they, they, so, you know, it just doesn't work. I just stay, I'm just, it's better that I stay out and do a national, you know, speak about everything nationally, internationally, and, and give you the, the reading from the, from the spirit of how things are going um, and the analysis from that point of view. But I do believe there's a punishing element um, in the uh, Jade Helm decision, the decision to go ahead and do Jade Helm. Why would it be decided? It's not just some, you know, normal drill. It, it seems to be a, a process of winning hearts and minds for what? You know, making people feel comfortable with what? Martial law? Um, you know, but so many people are talking about it. There's a flood of info. It's everywhere all over the Internet. It's just exploded with info. And, you know, already the Washington Post has written an article that people shouldn't be concerned with Jade Hill. You know, that, in other words, the, the left is taking a stand that it's just fine. The left used to be the anti-war left. And if they saw something like this going on back when, you know, during, the, say, the Nixon administration or whatever, they would have been out in the streets in droves. But because this is a left wing uh, because they understand the purpose of this is to um, find out who's who and what's what and sort of make the presence known. It's not, it, it, the drill is not for leftists. Leftists are considered friendly or blue, okay? The, the left is blue or the Democrats are blue. The, this is only a, a war against conservatives. 
and Christians and libertarians and constitutionalists and Americans, people with traditional American values, uh, you know, so the, so the left will never say anything about, even if it goes to martial law, because they feel like this army is going to kill their enemies, which is namely, you know, the, like the poor people at the pizza thing. Well, they're not so poor now. They've, they've made about a million dollars uh, from an outpouring of support, which they deserve for taking a stand. Um, they have a, every right to, to uphold traditional marriage, just as a, a gay person has every right if they want to, to uphold gay marriage. Um, you know, it's it's just it's 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 you know I'll uphold gay marriage, but you're not allowed to have traditional marriage. I mean, that's the, that's the message that you get. That's the hypocrisy. It's insane. But that's the for it's really they see the force of the of the of the jade helm to be their army coming against people they don't like. So that's why they don't say anything. They don't go against the Muslims because the Muslims want to kill Christians and are killing Christians, so they're friends. That's why the gay mafia and the Muslims get along, because they have a common enemy. I'm not saying every gay person. I'm just talking about the political tool of the left here, the totalitarian gay, gay mafia, if you will, uh, using the single issue to um, uh, political correctness to silence people, take their rights away, to, um, to have a, a minority wield power over the majority. You name it, they're doing it. Every corrupt thing in the book, they're doing it. And uh, it all has to do with a bloodlust to get their end. Politics was used to prevent us from having a civil war because, our, our, you know, because the, the, a leftist and a, and a conservative and a liberal are as opposite as day and night. And it would be, it's cats and dogs. And there would be a civil war if it were not for good rulers who, who you know, politics is our, our avenue to, um, to peaceably go about uh, uh, this whole difference between us uh, and accept that the other side wins every once in a while, but then you win once in a while. And it's had to be like that to prevent a civil war. So the left and the gay left and all, all these people will never say anything about this Jade Helm. They believe it's their army coming from the left that's there to punish conservatives. And, and in, in parentheses, you could put God-fearing people, constitutionalists, libertarians, you know, conservative values, traditional values, um, armed people, Second Amendment people, all the enemies they have, they feel that this, the army is now theirs to use on domestic soil to punish anyone they don't like. They're, every single thing they protested about, the left that is, back in the 60s and the 70s with the war in Vietnam and all the other stuff, everything Bill Ayers and all those people at Weather Underground and all these leftist organizations were all about, they've now caved on all their values and now have become the warmongers. I, I just can't even believe I'm seeing it. And I can't believe that I'm not hearing discussion from others about it. I've, I've looked on the internet and you hear a little thing here and there. I, I've decided I'm going to make this podcast say it all to, to really get to the bottom of it as it, you know, truth about all of it so that we understand what's, what's happening. Um, when, when Alex Jones says, I have to differ with him on something, when he says, you know, this is going to affect you people too, don't you, you know, you need to get up in arms about this Jade Helm thing. Well, they're not going to, it's not going to affect them. Right now, they feel they're using the army and the military to punish um, traditional values. People that don't agree with gay wedding, for example, that's the biggest sin you can do in America today. I, it's, 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 it's literally kaleidoscopic insanity. <laughs> that's all I can say. Every single thing they do is wrong. Every single thing they do is corrupt. And there's no light in them. There's no goodness in them. It, they've taken their masks off and they're seething to get even, to punish, to punish, and to punish. And I told you that's, you know, Obama's a classic, classic leftist in that way. He wants to punish his enemies. Like, look at this Democrat, Bob Menendez. He's punishing him, punishing, want to throw him in jail, whatever, all for the simple fact that he disagreed with Obama's foreign policy, which was wrong and has proven to be a complete failure. No? Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, all failures. And they weren't failures be before he got going with it. Um, but then again, 
I believe that Obama's doing that on purpose. He's, 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 you know, the Iran, another colossal failure, which I believe was on purpose too. The idea here is to let Iran come out of the closet with their bomb or whatever. Um, it, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's horrific to be incompetent. It's not being incompetent. It's intentionally, you know, having people call you incompetent because, you know, you just can't do it when it's, when, it, when it's part of the plan to undermine America, to undermine, you know, the, 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 so you see the factions. I told you, get your popcorn. Well, get your popcorn and, 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 and watch the show. Uh, Obama represents one faction, but there are powers that be higher up on the pyramid, okay? It's all about a pyramid now uh, from a spiritual point of view, which, or if you like, cult of death. I, you know, e either one is fine. Um, so they, right, the pyramid is basically represents death. <laughs> it's really simple, really simple to figure that one out. Uh, if, if they call that an art, some people say that in uh, Isaiah 19, that's, that's the altar, you know, the, the, the pyramid of Giza and the other, the other pyramids. It's like, that's not, that's no altar, my friend. That's a, that's a tomb. Okay. Hello. Wake up. Well, the guy that said that actually passed away, you know, Godspeed. Um, <laughs> I would just as soon have those things, those damn things removed from this planet, along with all the obelisks and everything else. It's, we're going into another paradigm. The pyramid does not play in the future. Masonry built itself, you know, ancient masonry, you know, secret societies of all the, 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 you know, secret Luciferian societies, if you will, because they're all Luciferian. Um, the, they, they've built their entire future around that pyramid, around everything being interlocking and everything being a, a certain way. It's like, you know, it's, the pyramid is obsolete now. The pyramid is obsolete. So I'm optimistic. I mean, it, there may be, yeah, I guess hell to pay could be between now and the time of a, of a, of a different paradigm, you know, of, of, of the end of this age or the end of this system and the beginning of another one. And it could just be awful and maybe few survive, but it may not be that way. It may be many survive and things just change. That's the, I'm seeing us just change, like people, you know, kind of drop their weapons on the battlefield and all their things they thought and all their paradigms, they just drop it all and go, oh, wow. It's all new. Oh, oh, I don't have any enemies anymore. I don't have to go punish you anymore. You know, I don't have to whip you and beat you anymore to, 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 to make a living. I mean, just go and live and now I'll go and live too. Yes, can you imagine, folks? It's troubled me so much, the, the, the man's inhumanity to man and the, and the constant war and all that kind of stuff and then enforcing this political correctness which just makes me kind of sick to my stomach to watch to watch this happen i i've i've had a real rough time over the weekend you know and i'm i'm kind of grateful that monday has come because i you know i'm just so uh sad you know and i know a lot of people who are sad you know a lot of people who are sad they they're just you know they they just can't find joy anymore in the material things and the and the beauty of things and the and or, or cool buildings or fashion or you know art or, or it, it just seems like all isn't it weird? I mean, Frankie was talking about jokes. Not we didn't have a Z and Frankie this weekend because we were all kind of because I was messed up is why you know I, I I just felt so bad and then in the middle of the night one night I. I heard the screams of the people, the Christians being slaughtered by the Muslims, and I could see their faces, and I, I prayed, you know, a, a lot of the night. I just kept praying to the Lord to stop it, to, to you know, it, it, it just, um, it's just not acceptable to me, okay? I am going to pray against it. I'm not going to have the attitude of, well, it's okay, it's God's will, this is what the Bible says is going to happen. I just won't accept that. And I'm not asking when I'm praying to the Lord. I'm not asking. If he's my father, and I believe he is, then he will listen to that prayer. I will not accept the killing of Christians just for, for the hell of it, just because people are sadistic. 
They just want, they want to see something suffer. I won't support that kind of barbarism. I know, you know, I mean, here's how someone put it. He said, the gays, the gay, the gay militants will, will, don't even care if they get killed as long as they can take down a couple of Christians. So that's why they don't care if Muslims kill gays because they, they kill Christians. So that's, it's like I'm in. Besides the whole gay thing is a, is a, is a, is a whole, is a ruse because they don't kill gays because they, they're gay, half of them. You know what I mean? It's, it's, if, if you, it, it's, I can't even, I'm not even going to go there. I'll just, I'll let gay historians talk about that, you know, but the Middle East is, you know, man, boy, sex and all that's perfectly, um, that's cultural. That's, that's understood as a normal thing. So I don't know what they're talking about. Institutionalized pedophilia. Yeah, pedophilia was always legal. You know, it's really um, in this backwards United States, it's not. <laughs> so they want to punish. They want to do what they want to do. They want to be free to have all their perversions. They want a Luciferian society. I mean, we all understand all this, but they're not going to get it. The future does not favor the way of darkness. That's what we're coming out of a way of secrecy, a few people lording it over and ruling over the masses and keeping them down and punished. You know, and if they have any aspiration, just arrest them and never tell them what their crime is, that deep, dark kind of, or send them to a psychiatrist so they will be, you know, have stigmatized society for the rest of their lives. Uh, you know, it, this kind of thing, okay, along with the supernatural war that it implies is a thing really already of the past. And I see them trying to bring it back, you know, feeling like they're losing, so they're desperate. And I believe that's what Jade Helm is. It's a desperate, um, and if there's any kind of, okay, the drills go live, false flag, uh, believe me, the whole internet is right on that case. They do anything like that, it's gonna be everywhere. You know, so they go, well, then we'll, we'll pulse bomb you, and then you won't have any internet <laughs> today. I mean, it's almost, we're almost at that level on the playground. It's like, it's not us versus them. It's not them versus us. It's the cosmos. Can't they understand that, damn it? How long do I have to say this over and over again before it starts to sink into people's heads? The cosmos is changing, and that's changing all of us. There isn't an us and them the way it used to be. Now, why can't they accept? So they're, they're having a false them. So they're saying, oh, well, get them because they're too blind to see. But the people higher up have seen and they pulled the plug on destroying the world right now and killing everyone off. And, um, and Obama is in a state uh, and his group, okay? And the group he belongs to, I suppose and there's a lot of... Um, establishment people involved, right? Because it's the establishment. Um, their, their way is over. You know, and it won't manifest. I mean, you're talking, you know, it might take years and years to, to really see. You know what I mean? It's a gradual thing at this point. But it's basically going that way, and we're past that 1930s thing. And um, so their attitude is, well, we'll just have a nuclear war and put the whole world in darkness. Well, they've been trying that. But there's these supernatural forces that keep intervening and just it just doesn't happen. You know, punish, 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 punish. Ooh. War, war will make them pay and die. Get take all their tax money from them and then go blow it at the at the uh, at, the, at, at the casino. You know, this has been uh, this kind of thing has has got to end. And yes. Even things like the whole Hampstead satanic, you know, cult thing. And the, Satanism is no cult. It's a global, you know, it's, it's within all people. You know, it's, it's a reality. It's, it's a, basically they have themselves as gods. It's, it's every man for himself. I, you know, I didn't want to go through it. I've been through this for 13 years trying to convince people on that other side to repent. I've been trying to do that. I've, been, I've spent 13 years proving the case that, you know, but but I can't do it. I realized, I told Frankie and Trish this on the, the last show from Durango that we did. Um, I told everybody, I said, you know what? I, a lot of what I, what I thought I was doing, I wasn't. 
it was much like barking, you know, like a dog barking at a freight train because it doesn't want the train, it wants the train to stop. I mean, it was just, I, I, that was, you know, that's about uh, how full, it's like Don Quixote tilting at windmills. It's very noble and cute and everything, but it was just a, a the fact that some people got some help, I was able to, you know, communicate things that helped some people along the way. That was, that was what it was for. Not, you know, but it just so happens, though, that um, I'm in the period of time and I'm always at the end. You know what I mean? I'm, I am the end. It's just the weirdest thing. I, I, I can't explain that to you, but I, I'm like, I don't know why I'm that role, but I have that role. I'm existing in a time where the end has come, this end thing, this, this end of one age, the beginning of another. Very interesting. And the effect of how watching people struggling to hold on to the old paradigm when that's all this is, this, this whole Jade Helm thing. They're, they're wanting to put the kibosh on. They want to punish those, those, those individualists and punish those constitutions and punish those people that, you know, returned from the war, that were, that were patriotic and went and did their duty in Afghanistan or Iraq and, and punish them for, for returning home and, and, uh, wanting to have, um, you know, their guns or whatever, you know, to punish them for thinking that, you know, they could have individual liberty, punish them for being the kind of people that they would even be in the military. You know, even though I, I, the president, just use them, I want to punish them when they return. So it's, 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 unt it's, it, it's insane. It's illogical. Just like a totally illogical statement is, is, is in the, um, I, I don't know if it's in the Army Training Manual, it's in something, some official documentation from the U.S. military that the Founding Fathers would not be welcome in today's military. Even if, you know, if by that you mean they own slaves or something like that, sure, that's not, those, that, those times have changed. But if you mean basic patriotic feelings or just, or whatever, um, that you would not have uh, a Thomas Jefferson or a, you know uh, a George Washington in the military um, because they're moral. What does that What does that tell us? You know that they've lost their way, obviously, and now they're just going to be a mad child and just punish anyone that they see that's doing something they don't like. And, you know, the Department of Homeland Security, they only exist to do one thing. They're, the biggest problem they've said over and over again is domestic violence and, and terrorism. Where is it? From right-wingers. Where is that violence happening? They say that's the biggest threat, not the Muslims, right? Because the left coddles the Muslims because they feel that the Muslims will eventually kill their true enemy, which is you can't be in the left and be a Christian, there's no way. You, you, no, there's no way. If you're on the left, um, you, you have to hate God, you know? If that's just the way it has to be. Otherwise, you're, you're not going to be. Uh, well, you can have your God in your official church, but just keep it quiet. Maybe you go to a liberal church. Like if you go to Stanford University, you've got this gal out there that has decided to throw out religion and she just wants to uh, hold hands and talk about touchy-feely issues, okay? So she's at Stanford University. I mean, that kind of really, that sort of thing is fine. But if it's Bible-based, it's not welcome here. So what are the morals that they have? Political correctness, which is basic hypocrisy 101. A, a country based on political correctness cannot survive. I think the EU is finding that out pretty quickly. Oh, yes, the, this nation has to go through a painful, painful uh, reform time. You know, we need reform here. We need to bring uh, somehow principles, morals, all that stuff that they, they feel they're at war with. Those are the very things that would save us as a nation and be a force of good in the world. Uh, we must somehow, uh, well, it'll be easier now to, to, to do that reform, to find that, that voice, to find that spirit. It's easier now than it was 30 years ago or 100 years ago. In fact, getting easier every day and more, more with the flow. So I just see there is, is fighting against this, something they're feeling inside. 
and they're fighting, fighting, fighting. They don't. That it, it, it. By the way, the future does not favor. You know, all 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 paradigms are off. You know, conservative, liberal, all that is off. It's just basically. It's all just one thing. It, it, it's, it's, the irony is it really is a new world order that's coming. But it's not based on man's new world order. It's not based on what they want to do because what they want to do makes no sense. What, what the new world order planners want to do, you know, um, does not make sense. In other words, it's based on paranoia. It's based on fear, having to surveil all the people because you can't trust them because they might find you out. Uh, you have to maintain a grip of power. All those ideas are out. Whipping up the Muslims against the West, having the, the CIA doing the whipping up and then having them attack Americans and then, and then going for a bigger war. All that is out the window because it's all found out instantly. On the, it's, it's, it's all over the... Look, look at what's happening already on the Internet. It's all over the internet that, um, you know, again, just taking this Jade Helm, you know, exercise, which I think has to do with the drought, technically. I, I think that the idea was to bring a drought, drought to the southwest through the chemtrail, you know, planes through geoengineering, and then intensify the drought so much that people have to be relocated. So there has to be kind of a state of martial art, a state of emergency declared, because there's not enough water to go around and people will not be allowed to, to stay in their homes. They're going to be, have to be moved and they're not going to get paid for their homes either. They're going to lose their property. This was a nagging, yes, should I repeat it? This has been nagging on me. Is it, is it just fear, paranoia? Could just, just, just fearing the worst? Could be. But this is what I got. I think it ties into the water issue. Figuring by that time, the drought will be so out of control, especially the period between uh, July and September, the hottest, driest, it's also fire season in California. I think that's, and it's going to be, you know, if it keeps going like this, you're going to have Arizona on fire, New Mexico will be on fire, right? It's all the fire areas. And, and so I think that kind of state of emergency would be called, and then the whole idea of the water war will come to bear. And, um, and basically, it's like this. If there isn't enough water, you're not allowed to stay there. The government has to reclaim that land. And, um, and by the way, this goes along perfectly with a little thing called Agenda 21. We'll relocate them and rack them and, st and stack them housing and all that. So I think that's what the card they've got up their sleeve. It has to do with drought. And, and, because, and I do, do believe they've predicted the drought based on the amazing amount of, of chemical geoengineering, which has been, um, I just marvel at how they can cover the skies from just pretty much everywhere. You know, that's a lot of planes needed, a lot of, and a lot of material. Um, it, you know, this was um, why the Southwest is so important to them. I don't know. But uh, could something like that be successful on the way to a better time? Yes. In the short term, that could that could that could they could easily do something like that of of uh, having to relocate masses of people out of the Southwest. Well, it's terrible, I know. But that's what I've been thinking. I mean, I could be totally wrong. It could be preparation for something in the Middle East. It could be preparation for a financial collapse, a certain, uh, any kind of other disaster. I think it's an ecological disaster created 100%, now hear me, 100% by the geoengineering planes who guarantee, by the way, just like, you know, when people realize they can do weather modification, they can guarantee a sunny day any day of the week. They can guarantee it's not going to rain and rain out on that on a, any day you want. China's already done that. The Beijing Olympics will be, uh, the weather will be perfect, guaranteed. They, how can they do that unless they have some case, unless, you know, just look up geoengineering and look at the firms that do it and look at what they promise. They also prom promise they can, they, can, uh, they can also seed clouds and bring rain at the same time. 
But you see, they don't do that, do they? Uh, I've, I've seen letters that people have written Jerry Brown out in California just saying, you know, they've tried to explain to him that the whole reason, but he's not going to give up the idea of a drought because the drought favors his power. Um, you know, so it's, he's, he's not going to, he's not going to look at the, uh, whatever's causing the drought. It's a letting a good crisis go to waste. It's the drought is for a politician. The drought is mana from heaven. The more the people suffer, the more he, he's in demand, the more power he has. But it'll go beyond suffering if, if it gets to that ecological disaster point. And that's what I'm concerned about. And, and how, how would they know that by July it would be a real problem? It's because I think they plan all of it. We had an El Nino condition two years ago and then last year. But when you fly enough of, the, of this material um, you know, in, in the area, I think it alters that somehow because it, it cools the, that water off. And then that's what creates more of a La Nina condition. La Nina means it's going to be a lot of snowfall, tremendous amount of rain and precipitation on the East Coast, where the West Coast would be completely dry. And El Nino would be the opposite. You'd have all the, the, the rain and the precipitation on the West Coast. We've had El Nino the last two years, and they it got quashed. It got back to, you know, you hear a little smattering. I mean, I know, I know what's been going on. It's, it's, it's really horrifying. The thing that, that kind of concerns me is that the general public does not know all the things. And I'm not even in, I don't, I don't wear a tinfoil hat. I don't go to conspiracy sites. I don't, I don't look for this stuff. I'm just, I seem to be able to see into a thing, you know. And this is, this is really a problem uh, that governments would use geoengineering to get control of the populace and to do what they want with them. I mean, I understand the motive, but it's pure darkness and pure evil. The idea that you would kill ecological life, fish and plants and animals, terrestrial animals, and um, just, just you know, destroy families if, if people have to be relocated and if, if a state of martial law has to be declared for an ecological disaster, which you know, as long as the people don't know it's geoengineering, as long as they know it's, it's man-made global warming, and, you know, this is what Al Gore warned about, as long as they think like that and they can't figure it out, you can control them. You can dominate them. You can make them do whatever you want. You can make them get on buses and go to a relocation camp. You can do all of that. So let me be the first to throw my hat in the ring. I believe it's ecological. It's, 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 I believe they're looking at an ecological issue, and it has to do with the drought. When the fires begin, people are going to be demanding somebody's got to do something. Uh, but creating the water shortage is the thing that the people would do who are in power to consolidate their power. And um, I think it's really sad right, that, that humans would do this to other humans. And yes, it's 100% man. It's not 50% man-made, 25%. It's 100% uh, geoengineering and no percent anything else. Because we had El Nino the last two years and it, it got blown. You know, never before in my life has an El Nino condition come up that, that, didn't, that just petered out. No, nope. I mean, there, there, sometimes it didn't come at all when predicted. But I mean, it's, it's, it's always been uh, an issue until now. And then the only difference between now and then are the skies. We had rain clouds coming here a couple of nights ago. And they spray. I've never seen the, the, the sky was soup at a million trails every which way, blending into each other and then becoming this haze and then dropping down. Terrible. I've never seen anything like it, the, the worst I've ever seen. And it was just because there were, it was a small front that came through, a few clouds. I mean, it's like, why would they go so overboard for just a few clouds? And they only sprayed in front of the clouds, in front of the front as it came in, and they only sprayed the corridor of where there are humans, and they don't spray, seem to spray anything else. I know that uh, folks up in Durango, they had uh, the same spraying those days. 
And then I was outside at night with Dasha, you know, well, I love to be out there around three in the morning, you know, and I love to just talk to the Lord and listen to the silence, you know. I, I feel that's just a, a priceless thing that um, I'm so glad I get to do that. Anyway, and I saw I went out and it was all cloudy, that full moon behind the clouds. And they were rain clouds, and it wouldn't rain. I was like, Lord. And I just, I went into a, I, I was not asking. I, I, it was, there will be no more of this. There will be no more of this kind of, these clouds that can't rain because they've, they've, they laid down so much stuff in the air. I mean, no, when I looked up at the sky a few nights ago, a few days ago, there was red and green and blue in the air, you know, in, the, in those clouds showing their, the chemicals as the sun shone through them. And, I mean, you know, magenta, they, had chrom they were chromatic colors, you know, metallic colors. And it was just, it was like the entire sky, were, you know, all of it was chemicals. And I just couldn't believe it, how over the top they went, just for one little front. So they're adamant right now. They're, they're on a, they're on a, I believe the chemtrail planes and the, the chemtrail program, uh, which we should call geoengineering or weather modification program to basically um, foment, create, and continue the drought to emergency status. They are at such full tilt now. There's so many planes, so many sprays, so much cohesion in all this. Um, it, I feel like it's all in preparation for this Jade Helm thing. I think that's the connection because by then, um, New Mexico will, you know, usually there's a fire here or there in the mountains. Um, the way we're heading now, and, and I could be wrong, you know, I do see floods coming at some point. But I just don't know when. I mean, I've never seen so much fervency in it. I've been following these, these, these planes and these aerosol sprays and all this for, for you know, good you know, more than a decade anyway, that I've been, you know, documenting them and, and, and watching the connection between, we never, in New Mexico, until, until they started really ramping up and flying all the time, we never had droughts. There was lots of rain. We had pinon trees. We had beautiful blue skies. It was just a whole different world here. Like, say, back in the 80s when he started coming here and then the 90s, it was beautiful. And it was rain all the time, all the time, you know. And uh, the beautiful desert rain. Same thing with Arizona. It was, all, it was beautiful, Arizona. But now it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much ruined here. And it's, um, you know, definitely we've lost many of our junipers and we lost all our pinions. So tragic that when I had to cut them down the first year. And it, it's all in connection. It only, you know, then there are some years where they didn't spray as much and we got tons of rain, came right back. And then they start in again, and we don't get any. They literally can stop it. And so I think there's this, there's some urgency now. They're, they're really at it now. And, uh, and then when, when the public has an outcry, you know, they'll back off for a little while and act like, oh, they weren't doing anything. Then they start in again. Um, but they finally feel they have something with this California drought. They finally feel like, okay, Here's a crisis we can really get a lot out of because that's primo land there. If they can get the people off the land and relocate them to the camps and then eventually to the rack them and stack them, Agenda 21 type uh, hovels, then uh, it'll be a little more than moving people into the projects, right, where they will, cannot escape. They'll be on the government dole. They'll, they'll just sit there watching TV. Can you imagine if Nevada, California, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, uh, the Southwest, can you imagine if that was all off limits due to ecological disasters? I don't know about Texas, but I'm just saying, you know, the, the real Southwest is New Mexico, Arizona, you know, uh, West Texas. Can you imagine causing that much pain and suffering to people. Um, not paying them a fair price for their homes, but, but rather just 
they lose them in this ecological disaster, which is no man's fault, so they can't get mad at anyone. And then the very people that did it come on in with, you know, warm food and a, and a shelter to, to, to be taken to and, and all that. They come in and provide all that. I, I just, it's, it's, it's beyond the Denver mural. Have you ever seen the Denver murals? <laughs> I've been there. I've seen them, you know, live. It's, it's, it's like a prophetic map of, of all that you see going on now. Plagues ecological disasters, wars, Darth Vader type, you know, uh, Nazi costumes for the, for the, you know, enforcement. It's terrible. And, and then they believe there's peace at the end. There'll be a peace, finally. And um, no, you do not get peace through waging war. You get peace by making peace. And this country, and I'm, I'm very embarrassed to say, you know, because we speak to the world from here, but we have become a force of evil in the world. I rather, I'd say it better, a force of darkness. You know, the United States is now known as a liar and a deceiver. That was not always the case. I mean, there's never, there's never been a perfect picture here. But um, it just seemed to me there was, even 20 years ago, there was a lot of, there's, you know, honor. There's this idea of tradition and honor and, you know, I just feel so sad that um, to, you know, to, to the first thing someone says when a plane goes down, oh, maybe the CIA did it, you know? I, I find that's embarrassing to me, okay? And to have Gorbachev, you know, instructing Obama that, you know, you're, you're not going to be the bully on the block. You're not going to just be able to go create hegemony around the world and throw your weight around and be invading all these countries and then enforcing this political correction. You know, you're going to have to coexist with people because this is not 1930. He was saying the same thing I was saying. That because of, in, because of globalization, because of uh, information sharing, it will not be possible, Gorbachev is saying, for the United States to continue what it's doing, trying to whip it up in the Ukraine, whip up World War III in Syria, all the things that we've been involved in. I'm just so embarrassed. I'm so sorry, but we have done it, and I'll, I'm an American. I can say it. We have been involved in evil, okay, and, and, and worse now than the Manhattan Project even. I mean, we've been involved in evil. Well, you can say what you will. I mean, it, it, it did, did it save lives? It, no, it's controversial, so I, maybe that's a bad comparison. But we have been involved in hegemony. We have been involved in, you know, nation shaping. And, and we have lost, now hear me very carefully now, because this is really a fulfillment. We have lost every endeavor. We have lost everything. All the blood and treasure spent in Iraq has been lost. We run out. We run Al Qaeda and we run ISIS. That's why they're. They, you know, you're never going to. You know, Obama can't bring himself to bomb ISIS. Or did, he gives lip service when people get upset, and then he it backs off again. But it's 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 all a psyop, and it's all basically part of this Albert Pike, Pike thing. And I just find it to be. It's 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 terrible, folks. It's terrible to know that we're involved in funding. You know, and supplying people who are killing Christians. I I find it just. It, it disturbs me so greatly, I can't tell you. It just really upsets me. And there are so many things like that that we do. You know, we, we seriously don't deserve, I mean, if you were to look at it like all the, the bad things that the United States has done, certainly you can't say that, you know, you know I mean, I think the U.S. is re responsible in a way for a lot of the dysfunction in the world and a lot of the pain and suffering that goes on. It didn't used to be that way. And I, for one, am, am, I, I want to see reform. And I believe we will see it. But it's the kind of reform that's done like a miracle. It just starts happening within. 
It's because when you are under the shield of darkness and you can get away with anything, you know, that's where your corruption grows. That's where you, you reach for more and more and more. Right? Absolute power corrupts absolutely, especially if it is fostered in the darkness where people have no control over it. So you can, you know, you keep it secret so you can lord it over them. We need to be a force for good in the world. We, to, to whom much is given, much is expected. We've had good fortune and we've earned it. But now, um, you know, we're more in line for punishment. And yes, there are people that would get it going in a negative karma way so that to bring about a punishment as part of their evil plan and trying to fool Mother Nature, you know, trying to, trying to like say, well, I'm going to make Americans party to all this stuff that's evil because then they'll be punished and then that will be my secret dirty work, you see. I will cause the forces of nature to punish America so I'll be off the hook. I mean, I've been saying that over and over, haven't I? I really do believe it's that, that chess match is on that level, that far ahead. I think that's sad too. I'm going to get the forces of karma to punish Americans so I can swoop in with martial law and confiscate all their properties and, and punish the ones I don't like. Again, it goes back to the spiritual battle. All this stuff is the spiritual battle. The Lord is not mock, though, you see. You can't manipulate him into doing your dirty work. And you can't manipulate, you know, the law of uh, reap what you sow uh, to make it go in your favor, though you be doubly duplicitous in order to um, exact it. You wield it as a weapon from which no one would ever blame you. It's brilliant if you can get away with it. But it's so cynical, too. It means a person is willing to try to fool the Lord. You, you got me? Fool the Lord into, you know, or natural law, if you like. Fool natural law, the forces of karma, if you will. You know, this, 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 this kind of sewn into the whole thing. Make that work for you or be a worker of iniquity so that your iniquity would benefit you and punish the other guy, even though he didn't do anything that he was, he, he, he ended up doing because he had to, and he became a party of evil, but the punishment went to him, not you, because it was a grand work of darkness. And um, that kind of thing fosters arrogance, and it fosters um, out, outrageous things. The other thing is this, as Obama said regarding his, you know, Masonic brothers going all the way back, you know, from all the presidents and all the different people that have, you know, built this thing, you know, he said decades when he said we've been building this thing for decades, and, you know, and they have, and they feel like they're going to lose it, but they feel it's because of the information war, the internet. It has set them back on their, their heels, right? So they feel that's the problem. So they're going to they're gonna confiscate that with this, 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 oh, gosh, this tortured fellow called Wheeler. Imagine being the head of the FCC, just being that mean of a human being and being so corrupt, you know, because this whole thing is transparent to me. I mean, I can see what it's all about. So he's a totally corrupt person, human being. And to have this totally corrupt person, you know, make this sort of naked, blind power grab with the idea of punishing. What they really want to be able to do is punish anyone with views not their own. You know, what a brilliant movie uh, Captain America was. Captain America envisioned the same thing. You know, it's kind of like they, it, it was like they had these people on a list, only this time they would basically you know, they want to kill all the people who are not good for the new world order are going to be killed from space. And they have all the list of everybody worldwide who they need to get rid of. Millions and millions of people. Millions and millions. And uh, they just push a button and these vehicles that hover out there will immediately take, 
you know, three or four million out a day. But they got a lot of days they got to kill people until they're all dead. Then we'll have just the right people here and everything will be fine. Now, that's one thing for that to, in a movie, I can see it, because it comes from a comic book, right? So that's a very much a comic book thing. Well, these extremists in these social planners, they have a similar view of getting rid of people who, who, who disagree. And it's horrifying to me to, to think we just saw this comic book of the same thing. Uh, you know, we saw James Bond films with Spectre and, and these evil, evil arcs, you know. And, and here we see people that are doing the very same thing, only they're serious about it. Again, it's not 1930. Uh, the, 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 the operating in complete darkness is just a thing of the past. You know, we, we all have to accept that basically the light, none of us is going to have secrets in the future. I mean, it's one of the things that goes. Secrets are things that go. You just are who you are. You know, you go on the Internet, you go on YouTube, you do your YouTube, you say your point of view. You are who you are. You're naked out there. The Lord's had me naked for a long time in front of the public, you know, kind of like, you know, not not bearing at all, but just, just not holding back, you know, just being real trying to because I, I think the, the problem that I have is not being able to find people that are real you know I, I mean every once in a while maybe but very rare and uh, so that seemed to be the thing that was needed on the internet it doesn't mean I can't be deceived but on the, on the big things I don't think I have been I've you know been pretty much on them what I'm calling for at this point is uh, not, not some radical thing, not disgruntled people hurting anyone. Now, I don't advocate that. Love is the greatest weapon. I, I, and, you know, forgiving your enemies, praying for them to, to, to come to their senses, absolutely a must. Not taking it all personally. I've had to really learn that this weekend. I tell you, I've just felt personally, I just was so upset with, you know, the things that were so obvious to me. I'm like, can't you see? Can't you see what's so obvious to me? Anyway, that's what I've got to share with you. I mean, I think the future, you know, you have to keep exposing the, the, the things in darkness. I mean, like, you know, I'm, well, my Jade Helm thing was taking it to the extreme. I mean, it's, would they kind of like in a Red Dawn fashion, round people up, take them out to the woods and, and under the guise of taking them to the relocation center and instead of doing that, just open up the machine gun and just blast them all? Um, do I have to answer that? Ultimately... It's so difficult because it's like I'm anticipating the best of times, but I feel like we're in the darkest period too. Sometimes it's darkest before the dawn. I pray, Lord, that no drought will sustain in Jesus' name, not in America, not where it is now in California, that it would be ease, Lord, that it be somehow set aside. That healing rain would come to California despite their planes and come to Arizona and come to New Mexico. Lord, I, I, I ask you to show them that their planes are nothing compared to you. If you want to rain, it's going to rain. And I pray that you bring the rain, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, I see that. Oh, as far as uh, ISIS being in every in every every country, when the FBI released that statement that ISIS is is in every state, I cringed because I I understood that. Yeah, because they put him there. I cringed. I cringed. I, I I ooh, that's not a statement that the FBI would make. You see, I I can't, I caught that. I I didn't want to catch. I was looking away from the radio. I was trying to do something else. Well, there's nothing we can do with it. Okay, FBI, if they're in every state, 
go round them up. They might commit terror. And if they're affiliated with terror networks, if they're a member of ISIS, they need to be arrested today. And since you know they're in every state, then you know where they are. Go arrest them. Can't do that. Got to use them to get the Christians. Why, well, Albert Pike again, right? I'm sorry. You know, it's, it's, it's got to be really tough for kids to be alive right now. It's got to be really tough for people in their, you know, young, young adults in their 20s and 30s. It's, it's got to be just, just, I pray that you live long, you 20s and 30s. I pray you live long and prosper. I pray you all who hear this show you live long and prosper, every, every single one. You know, because I know that you, you good people, should you live long, be healthy and prosper, that you'll do the right thing. That you'll be a force for good. You know, let us never come back to this point of this, this draconian world of, I know what it is. It's like, it's, you know, day and night, night and day was like kind of, you know, it was a weird balance. It was a weird blend. And, um, you know, there's, there's a, there was definitely an enticing dark side uh, and a whole fraternity of that darkness that uh, one could join to, but, you, but do you, <laughs> you join at the expense of other people. That was always my objection. It's always at the expense of somebody else. Where we're headed is mutually beneficial. I mean, I can, I can have mine and you can have yours. How about that? I don't have to get mine at the expense of you. I know some people in Hollywood, they, 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 they used the, the rule of thumb in Hollywood was such a dog eat dog world there. But the rule of thumb is you don't really go up unless someone gets fired as, you know, as you're going up, someone has to go down or it's not a real promotion. So someone must be losing their job for you to increase yours. So, and you must have a hand in causing it. Well, that's working iniquity. In other words, you, I understand what all that is. Um, that's really above my pay grade. I don't really work that way. And so I, I couldn't really, you know, work in, in industry because I, I just, there's just no way I, um, I just can't condone that sort of thing. You know, but I saw people doing that and living that way and, and, and getting a, ooh, a real pleasure seeing somebody else de demise. I'm like, don't you understand? By you laughing at them, you're going to get yours one day. There'll be someone knocking you out of the box. But no, live it up for now. You think you're immune. It happens, folks. I've, I knew people who were making all kinds of films and stuff and being pretty successful you know, with, with, with financing and, and, and having, you know, having a, a way to go, a living to make, a, able to put food on the table and have kids and everything, and all of a sudden, it just dries up totally. And, you know, it's, 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 it's not, a, not a, you know, the, then the divorce, then the family breaks up, then, you know, they're all alone. It's kind of like the uh, the character that Liam Neeson played in this movie recently. I, I can't tell you which what it was, but he was he had he had to be corrupt because that was the only way to feed his family. But when you meet him in the movie, he's alone. There is no family. <laughs> so that that question and answer that was answered. You know, they weren't justifying going with the corruption to feed your family. They were showing what happens to corrupt people. There is no family now. He's all alone. All right. Well, in the spirit of keeping it lighthearted, I'm I'm totally. I feel that I put in a good day's work, already, because and by the time you hear this, it'll probably be this evening because Angie won't be able to get to it till this evening. So, when you finally get this, um, I f yes, okay. So there's an incompetence on the part of the Jade Helm thing that, that will be coming in. They will be incompetent. Um, a comedy of errors, if you will. Uh, and they might even have to cut it short or even call it off. I, I, that's all I got. I'm just giving it to you, okay? And 
look, just remember, God is love, and he loves you personally, and you can love him personally. It, if you like. Uh, as much as the world hates the idea that there's a creator who's got that kind of power, who won't, if you will, share the wealth with them, make the burden easier for these canines, these protected ones. Everything I've got, I've had to really bootstrap it. God did me no favors. Oh, yes, he did. You couldn't breathe without him. You couldn't have those stupid thoughts without him. So therefore, look, repent, repent often. I, I, that's what I've got to do. I was a mess this weekend. And I, like I said, I felt the screams, could hear screams and, and the awful, terrible people, you know, dying of this awful persecution and, and, you know, and then I'm thinking about people being rounded up here for, for no other reason that they're, they might be a threat. Well, if I'm a threat, it's not to, I'm a peaceful person and so I'm really not a threat. I mean, I'm just basically, I mean, if I am, it's because I'm advocating goodness rather than evil. I, I guess that makes me a threat. But I'm, I'm advocating, you know, reform rather than destruction. I'm, I'm seeing reform coming. I'm excited about it. I'm seeing a return to beauty, you know, to good, good things. But all good things, in my experience, come from the Lord. All the good things I have in my life have come from the Lord. All good things. That's Psalm 16. All good things come from you, Father. Psalm 16, you would think, would be downloaded endlessly for people that would want that encouragement and want that anointing and want that, that feeling, that, 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 that you know, the closeness of God. Um, it's really hard for me to understand. And I guess it's because it doesn't have the official stamp of approval on it. So it's just a bastard, right? But you got to undo your thinking there. That would be exactly 180 degrees opposite God. That would be anathema to God if I had that stamp of approval. We don't want the stamp of approval. We don't want to speak to the uh, masses. We're here talking to you. And with that, I bid you shalom. Oh, you're just too much of a Zionist. You're a Christian Zionist. And it's like, well, um, this is a subject for another day. But I do believe that the, that the Lord showed me something about physical and spiritual and how it's all valid. The, the physical world is also valid, you know. He showed me a whole bunch of things that are just hard to put into words. So I won't do that. And uh, I'll see you next time.